Right then folks, <clears throat> welcome back to the second video, or welcome to the second video, welcome back to this product I should say. So we have created, thus far we've created our uh, two side bits in Part Studio 1, our two side bits in Part Studio 2. And now what we need to do is we need to go and we need to line them up and mate them together. Mating and aligning is what we're going to be doing. Okay, and then we're going to do that to start with, and then we're going to go back and we're going to do some more um, another part studio later on where we produce the the base, and then we we actually make the little dowels that are going to go in, and then we're going to make the lid and we're going to put the inserts in, and it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so assembly one so down here we've got an assembly. This is an area where you do not design anything; you just put things in. If we're looking talking about HPL thing to think about here is very much um, about precision it's about working within the rules of a domain you have there, there is no these are rules that are based on physical truths we cannot bend them this is not about being creative this is about putting it together uh, in a very very methodical way okay so to get things in here all we do is we go to insert and I'm going to start with these two bits so I can put them in as a part studio but quite often you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to put them in as separate components. Now it doesn't matter here so much, but to do that you just click that arrow and it separates the components out. So if I click on part one, I'll drop it where I like. Okay, if it actually lets me do it. Click on part two, drop that roughly opposite it. Now it looks like it's opposite it, but in reality it's not opposite it and it's on this completely different area in space. So. It does that, it's a bit of a quirk of the program, you just have to live with it. But there are things we can do if you keep them relatively close together, <clears throat> that it kind of helps later on. So let's we've got those two. Let's insert um, the bits we need from part studio two now. And this is where you'll see my deliberate mistake. So part one and part two. And hopefully we'll see the deliberate mistake I've made is they are not oriented the way we'd like them to be in real life. But that's cool because I can show you how to sort that out. Now if I if I'd have thought about it, well I knew what to do, but if I'd if I'd have done it the correct way and when I was doing part studio two, I would have designed I would have drawn them the other way around so that they sat on the correct work plane. So rather than when I did it from the top, rather than aligning with the front, I would have aligned them with the right hand side and then they would have been the right way around. But it's fine. We have ways and means to get round it. So um, now it's difficult to explain in a tiny little window here, and I, but I will do a separate video on this. And I, might, I might splice into this one, I might not. Um, there's a very simple way to think about how we put parts together. When we are physically holding bits of material and putting them together, we do it without thinking about it because we're intuitive beings. Uh, the computer program is not. The computer program is dumb, for want of a better word. So we have to tell it every single thing. We can't say put that part into the end of that part because it doesn't know what a part is and it doesn't know what the end of it is. So what we have to say is we have to identify things it recognises and what it recognises are the edges, faces, um, vertexes and all that sort of stuff of the objects we've made. It knows what they are so we can say let's take this face and put it in this position next to this other face and it will do it. Okay, So that's effectively what we're going to do here. Right then, folks, I wanted to do a quick video that explained what I was talking about with the um, uh, planar mating. So, when we insert um, things into on shape, into an assembly, what you'll find is, let me just zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. We insert, let's say we've inserted this part in, and I want, I, I want this to be lined up here. Okay, at this corner, like that. But when it inserts, it sticks it up in the air like this. So what we need to do is tell it a few things. Firstly, I want to say to it, right, I want that side to be uh, made to that side. So it does that. So I brought those two together. Sorry, dog. I brought those two together. Uh, and then what I need to do is say, right, unfortunately it can still move in all these different directions. But it just can't move up and down because I've mated these two. So what I need to do now is say, right, I want this side here to be aligned with this side here. So I can do that. 
So now it's mated to this and it's mated to this, it's aligned. So now all it can do is move along this way. That's all it can do. Uh, so I simply have to say, okay, this side here, align with this end here. Okay, and that's it. So now it's now locked in position. And that's basically how it works. I do here. So a really good idea is to have something fixed. So everything isn't just floating around. We want some things to float around, but we want one part at least to be fixed in place. When you build a house, you don't just throw the bricks where you fancy it. You put the foundations first, they can't move. And then you can place everything else on top of the foundations, knowing that whatever happens, that big slab of concrete can't move anywhere. And that's what we're gonna do here. So this part here, um, completely arbitrary decision, but it's the closest one to me. I'm gonna right click it and I go up to fix. And what that means is if I pick this up, I can move it around. I can move this around. I can move this around, but I can't move this around. And in fact, it tells me, no, you may not move that around. That is now fixed in space. Good, so what I'm gonna do, I need to line this one up with it, but it seems a bit silly trying to line that one up because it's not got any points of contact. So for me, it makes sense to try and line this one up with this one this way. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. And by the way, you guys, you'll have to be a bit adaptable here because your uh, parts won't be all in the same place as mine are. So it's the, uh, it's the process that's important here, not necessarily doing exactly what I'm doing. Now, I need to turn this round, uh, but I can only do this. So what I do, if I click on it, it offers me the option to adjust the um, orientation of the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Okay, so what I need to do here is, is, is change this one. So if I click on it and drag it, oh, I don't want to drag it that way because the holes will be the wrong end. I'm going to drag it the other way. You'll notice it's given me an account of how many degrees. So if I stop somewhere and then press 90, it will take that to perfectly 90 degrees. I'm going to click away. And now you see it's oriented correctly. But unfortunately, I'll, I'll put it there and that looks like, oh, we're pretty close. No, we're not. Okay, so we need to do it properly. So I'm just going to pull it away. Now, this is the the, the whole point about um, mating objects together and aligning them and all the rest of it is that we do it methodically, as I've already mentioned. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I want this to sit here, roughly. Well, I want it. To, that's roughly. I want it to be exact. I know in real life that face there and this face here line up together. So I'll make that a rule. So I'm going to go up to this tool up here. It's called Planar Mate. I'm going to click that face and I'm going to click that face. Now it looks like it's gone wrong. It hasn't. Press return. What it's done is it's just, it, it's just done it randomly because all it knows is whatever happens, it just needs those faces to be lined up together. And they are in that axis but no other. I can move it up and down and I can move it this way but I can't move it away from that face. So what I need to do next one, I know that face, let me just move it so you can see what I'm doing, that face there and that face there also should be at the same level so I'll go up to planar again and I'll click that one and I'll click that one and it does its special little thing again. Press return or the tick. And now the only way I can move it is that way. The other two are locked. I can only move it in that y, well, x axis, I guess that is. So how do I stick them together? Well, if I pull them apart slightly, again, planar. That face there, sometimes you have to really zoom in to make sure you are getting the right face. I'm not picking up the inside of a cylinder or something. That face, it's going to spin this, and that face. I want those touching. Press return. Hey, presto. Bingo, bango. There we go. So now it can't move because those rules are that I've told it is I want this bit and this bit to line up. And at the same time, I want that bit and that bit to line up. And while that's happening, I want these two faces touching. And if all those three things are true, that can't move. Okay, it's completely constrained. And if we look through the whole 
goes all the way through both bits and it's perfectly lined up. Magic. In fact, even if I if I can click here and go to translucent, you can see it there, like. Oh, what a result. Okay, I'm gonna get that off because I find it a little bit confusing. Alright, next thing. Um well I might as well line this one up over here now. So again, I can do it from there. I don't even need to move it over. I know I want that face. And I well that face, that face, it doesn't matter. They need to be the same height. So I'll select them. And that will go to the right height. Now I need to say uh I would quite like this face and this face to be lined up. So that one. And that one. There we go. Now I can only move it in that way. So I might as well say to it, well, let's get those faces touching. So planar. Click it. I hope that would help. That one. Turn it around a bit. And that one. They need to be in contact. My mouse doesn't work right. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Oh, stupidly, I've done it the wrong way. So, ha! <laughs> Brilliant. I love it when I make an error. You can see what I've done. Absolute rookie error, but that's okay. It shows me, it allows me to show you how to sort it out. Now, you can work past, back through all these mates, but actually, it's so much easier normally to click the part, completely delete it, and just reinsert it. So, that part was. Not that bit, we don't want that. Happens to the best of us. That part was... It was in part studio one and it was part two. So I'm going to whack that there. And this time I'm going to do it properly. <coughs> the first mate, uh, mate was correct. The first one was. So that planar, that one. And... Oh, it doesn't even click, click it. This mouse is terrible. And that one. Okay. And I want... Planar. I would like this one, and but no, I don't want that one. That's a lie. I'm gonna get rid of that. That's why I went wrong last time. Uh, I want <laughs> silly. I want that one and that one. Perfect. And now I need to do is just because you can still move that way. Planar, mate. This one, and touching this one, brilliant. Okay, good. And the final one again, I need to do some um, jiggery pokery. I need to click on this one and turn it round on its axis. So, click on it. Oh no, it's trying to mate it. Get rid of that first. Click, um, turn it around the right way. That's not quite, so I want to put 90 in. And it's exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to start with the height because I like the top to be aligned first. Good, goody, goody, goody. You don't have to tick it every time, but it's just it makes life easier. Um, I could say there's diff diff different ways I could do this actually. I could have that one aligned with that one. Yes, indeedy. Now I just need to do it that way. So let's say. Well, I'll just do it the same way. This one here. I want it to touch this one here. Boom. Lovely, jubbly. Let's look at that. Excellent. That is now working perfectly. Get rid of that. Uh, and I can't move any of these parts separately. Which means I've made a perfect assembly. Wonderful. What a treat. So there you go. That's assembly. Now you might want to run through this video a couple of times. It can be a bit hit and miss. Um, but just, you know, remember you've got to stick to the rules on this. You need to take your time, pause the video as you're going through. Try to recognise when you've made a mistake. Um, part of self-regulation. Part of our meta thinking. Okay, so self-regulation. We need to recognise where we're making mistakes. And we need to be able to go eventually go back and be able to rectify them. Okay. So that's a huge focus in this program. But if it gets completely wrong, don't panic about it. Click the part and just get rid of it and start that bit again. There's nothing wrong with that at all. 
Um, the more you use this, the more intuitive it becomes, the far uh, fewer mistakes you will make. Okay, thank you, have fun.